how would you like to be able to figure out any alternate tuning? Let me specify, any major alternate tuning. See, the thing about alternate tunings is that when you tune your guitar into a different tuning, an alternate tuning, think open D, open G, open C, all of a sudden, the usual chord shapes that you use don't work, and the usual scales that you play also don't work. But in this lesson, I'm actually gonna share with you how to crack the code of any major alternate tuning. Yes, there are three things that you can do to approach any major alternate tuning that will allow you to figure it out immediately. So without further ado, here's that lesson. Alternate tunings are just plain cool. It's a great way to turn the guitar that you have already into a completely different instrument. In fact, it really encourages exploration of the fretboard as well. But the problem with alternate tunings is that every tuning comes with its own set of chord shapes and its own set of scale patterns to remember, right? Actually, that's wrong because today I'm gonna to show you a three-step method that will allow you to get into any alternate tuning figure out the chords to that tuning, and figure out the scales to that tuning. The three universal rules or steps to decode any alternate tuning are as such. Number one, identify the notes you need. Lay out the scale, identify the first degree, third degree, and fifth degree. That's gonna be what you need to create the chord you're gonna tune to. Second, identify the chords. That's pretty easy. You tune your guitar to a chord, so if you strum all six strings, it's a chord. If you bar any fret, it's also gonna be a major or minor chord, depending on the tuning. And remember, for a major chord in a major tuning, bar all six strings. For a minor chord in a major tuning, take the third and flat it by a half step or one fret. The converse is true for minor tunings. If you bar all six strings in a minor tuning, it's gonna elicit a minor chord. If you wanna make that chord major, go ahead and raise the third or the string that is tuned to the third, one fret towards the body. And the last step is to identify the scales, and that's pretty easy. Take a string that names the tuning, so again, if you're an open D tuning, isolate the D string, and follow the major scale pattern if it's a major tuning. Open, second, fourth, fifth, seventh, ninth, eleventh, and twelfth. If it's a minor tuning, you're gonna do the same exact process with a subtly different pattern. You're gonna take the string that names the tuning and execute the minor scale pattern. Open, second, third, fifth, seventh, eighth, 10th, and 12th. And remember, with alternate tunings, it's all about experimentation. So getting there is really half the battle and it unlocks a ton of fun. So feel free to go forward and decode alternate tunings as you wish. Now I want you to know that was just a small snippet of a much larger lesson where I use those universal rules on three different guitars in three different tunings. You're definitely gonna wanna check that out. And to do that, just please go to acousticlife.tv forward slash tunings, T-U-N-I-N-G-S. Okay, last week on Acoustic Tuesday, you learned when you should change your strings, we listened to Mandolin Orange, and we heard from Brendan at Heartbreaker Guitars with a glorious bourgeois LDBO presentation guitar. This week on Acoustic Tuesday, you already learned how to crack the code of alternate tunings. We're gonna look at Taylor's Grand Pacific models, specifically the 517 and the 717 Builders Edition, and we're gonna hear from a previous Acoustic Tuesday artist who took out some time to answer our questions. All that and more right after this. I'm Tony Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 99. Yes, the Wayne Gretzky of Acoustic Tuesday episodes. This is the show where you're gonna learn about acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and get inspired to live your very best acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I'm gonna share with you my guitar geek list for the week, and I've got some fun surprises, some detours, and some extra special things in this week's episode. But first, your guitar geek trivia. Here is your question. What year marked the beginning of Chicago's famous Old Town School of Folk Music? Was it A, 1943, B, 1957, 
C1964 or D1968. Go ahead and ponder that and at the end of the show, I'll be sure to give you the answer. Now, before we dive into the rest of the Acoustic Tuesday show, Acoustic Tuesday is brought to you by Tony's Acoustic Challenge. Are you tired of playing the same handful of things over and over? With Tony's Acoustic Challenge, you'll have more fun with your guitar while getting better in the process. This is done with an innovative method I call dynamic guitar learning. Log in every day to find a super fun 10 minute guitar challenge that rotates between the five essential categories of guitar improvement. Here's a recent five star review from Matt H. I love having a new bite sized lesson every day when I log in. In just about 10 minutes, I really feel that I've done something meaningful to improve my connection to my guitar. The course is beautifully structured and just so damn enjoyable. Very happy about the investment I made in Tony's Acoustic Challenge. To see why Tony's Acoustic Challenge has a 4.9 star rating from over 574 reviews, go ahead and visit guitarchallenge.com or click on the link in the description below. Now, before I really dig into the Guitar Geek list today, I have to introduce you to a very interesting individual, uh, Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr. the first. Welcome and good morning to you. Tony, how are you? I'm really good. You know, I can't help but notice you have adopted a new fashion style today. Yes, well, this, this is in honor of uh, a very dear friend of mine. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but more on that later. Yeah, 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 I think there's a little bit of a story on this new, um, headdress type uh, type apparatus that you're wearing. Well, I decided to go this way because I'm not generally a, a camo type guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so I just thought I'd change it up a little bit. And well, Good. I mean, maybe I, after saying hi, I should have came in with like a yo, yo, yo or something. <laughs> well, Noah, to, to stick to the guitar, uh, the guitar track that we're on, do you favor alternate tunings when you play? Do you enjoy them? Well, I love how you asked me that question and you asked me that question earlier, and you answered it for me. So, <laughs> I did. So. I literally, in the same breath, I asked the question, and I was like, oh, well, yeah, you do. No. Yeah. Would you like to answer this question for me? No, no, no. I'd like to hear it in your words, please. Okay. Well, <clears throat> as a bass player, I will say, what? what? Alternative tuning? What? What's that? <laughs> that's kind of what, that's a beauty about the bass guitar, let me say, that it's all completely symmetrical in its tuning, right? So, True. So your patterns are the same everywhere. No compensation for a half step off or mm -hmm, anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, however, of course, there is the drop D tuning or drop C for your bass if you have a four string. If you want to get really low. Really low. Like get low. But as far as alternative, alternative, I can't have a funny time with that word. Alternate tunings. Yes. Um, are concerned. Um, days of the new. Travis Meeks. Right. That, that was my main introduction into alternate tunings. Ah. Um, and so I, I kind of have delved a little bit. Okay. But, okay. But not so much. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, with those tips, you'll surely be able to figure them out now. So there you go. There you have it. <laughs> it's funny, you know, Travis Meeks hasn't reached out to us yet. And that, that somehow makes me feel a little bit bummed. But I think he will. There's still time. I know. Yeah. I, I just worry. want your dream to come true. I thank you, thank you. I'm, yeah, it, it's fine. I we can move on. But, okay, but okay. There's always hope. Well, I want to reintroduce our next guest. Guest, guest, guest. Wow. How about the words today? I want to reintroduce our next guest because back on episode ninety-one, I shared with you a good friend of mine. Actually, well, I, I, he, he gets shared with everybody. He's a musician, somebody I uh, worked with back in Chicago. His name is Simon Flory. He recently released the album Radioville, and he was so kind after that episode to take some time out of his busy schedule and answer our questions. So without further ado, let me introduce to you again, Simon Flory in this Ask the Artist segment. Howdy y'all, this is Simon Flory, and I'm here to answer three acoustic life questions. Number one, who is an under-the-radar artist I think folks should be listening to? And that one's easy. I would say it's Jake Palachek. That's P-A-L-E-S-C-H-I-C. -E -E He's a Fort Worth, Texas-based singer-songwriter, just a thoughtful, masterful songwriter, incredible fingerstyle guitar player, and a gorgeous voice that kind of floats over it all like a pedal steel. He's incredible. Check him out. He's making great records with the folks at Nile City Sound. And they're the ones that brought you Leon Bridges, so check them out. All right, number two, out of all my acoustic guitars, which is my favorite and why? Well, it's my only guitar that I own, that's right, because I don't need another one. It's my 1998 Gibson 
early J45, made in Bozeman, Montana. This thing is just a versatile, completely reliable workhorse. I've never done anything to it. I mean, it's just, it's been awesome. And I've had it since 2007 um, when I was working at the Old Town School of Folk Music with Tony. And uh, this thing came in on donation. I always wanted a Gibson. This thing was really tight. It was, it's only one owner, hadn't been played much. Two little check marks. I wanted an old Gibson. And he kept telling me, hey man, you got to get this thing. It's going to open up. You're going to love it. And I said, no, I'm going to pass on it. So later that day, somebody came in looking for a guitar and I pulled this thing out for him. And uh, they said, well, how much is it? When I looked at the price tag, this is what it said. Simon's guitar, do not touch. Tony basically made me buy it and I will be forever grateful to him because it is awesome. Thank you, Tony. All right, number three, what is the piece of gear that has changed my acoustic life? And that would be right here. Well, we're gonna go for two actually. Number one is the Terry Audio White Rabbit Deluxe. And that is T-E-R-R-Y audio.com. That's, that's made by my friend Marshall Terry who actually co-produced and engineered Radioville, my new record. Um, he uh, is a genius. He's awesome. He, what he basically did is he hand-wired the circuitry, of like an old line amp or a like a like a uh, like an old tape playback, or basically it's like turning, uh, like plugging into a um, Neve console channel. I mean, it's absolutely awesome. It has all these variables in it, which you can use, um, that create sag and you can push an amp and all those things. But since I just use it through a PA, um, I use the blue channel, which just enhances the sound. It sounds absolutely fantastic. It's like a compression without a compressor kind of thing. It's wonderful. Check them out. And then next would be the uh, Fire Out of Products, the Red Eye Twin, which uh, y'all probably heard of. I hope it's the best DI in the business. I tell you what, um, it has a dual a, B, or A, and B input, which I use for my guitar and my banjo. It's got two different gains, two different trebles, so I can work out their, uh, you know, output levels, uh, um, through my, um, through the PA, and it has the best boost in the business, just the cleanest. Sounds great. All right. Thank y'all. Check everything out. Love you, Tony. Thank you so much for featuring my music on your show. Love your show. Love y'all. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Tony. Guitar Geeks, unite. I want to again thank Simon Flory for sharing his time and answering those questions for us. A couple of observations. First of all, the picture choice on his walls in his home is, is outstanding. Uh, and also, I will say that I have seen that particular uh, acoustic preamp. It's made by FireEye. I believe it's called the Red Eye. It's a black box with a red button, the one that Simon featured. Uh, Simon uses it. Christy Hayes, who I play with pretty frequently, uses it. I just went to a Leo Rondo concert uh, last night. He uses it. So I see that more and more. So I'm thinking I maybe should try one of those out. Anyways, uh, another more tragic uh, report I have for you is that very shortly after Simon shot this video, this happened. I got a text and he sent me this picture and he said, dude, you'll never believe what happened. And the picture was pretty evident that the guitar fell off a stand of sorts and actually broke. So let's all send our collective good guitar geek vibes to Simon Flory and hope that his guitar does indeed get repaired. And again, if you wanna learn more about Simon Flory, please visit acousticlife.tv forward slash 1891. He was featured back on Acoustic Tuesday episode 91 and he is a singer songwriter that I think you should absolutely here. Uh, and I also want to mention this, that if you're ever in the Fort Worth, Texas area, make sure to check Simon's website because if he's playing, you should check him out. He puts on a hell of a show. He, uh, he is a very active performer and his, um, his ratio of body sweat actually shows that. If you ever look at any live pictures of Simon, um, he, he works hard out there. Uh, and I can say that because we're buds and I think he'd be okay with me saying that. Uh, now, moving on down the line, I do wanna know what you think of the show so far. So in the comments below, please let me know and please include where you're tuning in from. And while you're leaving a comment, 
you think to yourself, you think to yourself, gosh, have I subscribed to this Acoustic Life YouTube channel yet? And if you haven't, please do. Go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and don't forget to click that little gray bell. That'll give you a notification of each and every new video that gets released on this channel. And also a very important favor that I wanna ask you to do right now. Please like this episode of Acoustic Tuesday. See, the thing is when you like this episode, it helps Guitar Geeks Unite. And you might think, well, that's silly. If I just click the like button, how's that gonna help any Guitar Geeks Unite. Well, here's the deal. The more that the Acoustic Tuesday episodes get liked, the more that YouTube puts it in front of other Guitar Geeks. So just by simply clicking on that like button, you are helping other Guitar Geeks discover the Acoustic Tuesday show, and our dream is realized in getting Guitar Geeks to unite every single Tuesday on Acoustic Tuesday. Now, speaking of comments, I actually have a couple comments I'd like to share with you all, and a couple of questions that came in uh, via the comments as well. Now, I took these back from from Acoustic Tuesday episode number 96. So here we go, I've got a good four of them. In fact, the last one contains a question that I think some of you might really want the answer to. So uh, we'll get there, but first a couple of other questions on some gear related things. Uh, this first one comes from Theodore Rooting. He says, I'd like to know your thoughts on PRS's new hybrid X brace and fan brace in the new models of their acoustics. I have the A60E and it sustains incredibly well. So Theodore is referring to the bracing talk that I gave on Acoustic Tuesday episode 96. And I had mentioned X bracing and I had mentioned fan bracing, but I failed to mention the fact that PRS is employing a combination, a hybrid X and fan bracing. Now, when I first saw this, I was actually out at the PRS factory. Gosh, this was probably some five or six years ago, maybe five years ago, I saw a top, a raw top being braced and I looked at it and I was like, what on earth is happening right now? Because it is literally an X brace and in the area where you'd have the bass tone bars along the lower bout of the instrument, it's fan braced like a classical guitar. And I was very curious about this, uh, mainly because of the structural integrity of it, but more for the tone as well. Um, I should say the tone in addition to the structural integrity. It turns out structural integrity is totally fine. We've got that X, which provides that nice rigidity and the fan bracing, those tone bars that kind of go parallel to the X bracing in a way, those actually provide a wonderfully responsive instrument. Uh, because the tone bars, uh, the heavier, more traditional tone bars aren't weighing down the top, I find that the PRS acoustics actually offer this wonderful brightness and responsiveness because you don't have to play them hard at all. In fact, they respond to a, a light touch. They freely offer sound, they're very resonant. Now, that being said, if you're a heavier handed player, beware because these guitars do, because of their lightness, uh, have a built-in compression. So if you strum them very hard, you might not actually get as much sound as you think. So a light touch goes a long way with that specific bracing pattern. So awesome question, Theodore. Thanks for asking. The next one, now check this out. This is so cool. This next comment comes from none other than Acoustic Tuesday featured builder, Tom Sands. Uh, if you remember back on Acoustic Tuesday episode 96, we featured Tom Sands and he builds some amazing guitars. And I actually had a couple questions and he answered them in this comment, which I thought was so cool and very guitar geeky. Tom says this, hi, thanks so much for your kind words and the feature. Will's guitar called Jupiter is Redwood over Black Limba and Daisy is my apprentice. And in the video, she's playing another Model S in Sitka Spruce and Powell Farrell. We're so glad you like the work we're putting out. Thanks again. Well, thank you, Tom. Uh, that is so cool and just shows how awesomely tight knit this acoustic guitar community is. Uh, Tom's work is really inspiring. If you don't know anything about Tom, please check out Acoustic Tuesday episode 96. And uh, I gotta tell you, you have to check out his series the week this week because he gives these quick little updates on the guitars he's building and you get to see some fine tone woods and also get to almost participate in the building of these guitars. You kind of track them through their various stages. It's pretty darn cool. So thanks, Tom, appreciate your comment. Next, we have a question from Philip Carter, and I'll answer this one as quickly as I can. Uh, I need an episode on Dobro pickups. This is more of a request than a question. He says, my Dobro has a terrible sounding piezo attached to the cone, and I need something better. Is there already an episode on this? Well, Philip, we haven't done an episode on that quite yet, but I can give you two recommendations. I'm gonna recommend very highly the Fishman Nashville series Spider Cone Resonator Pickup. Now, if, you're, if your Dobro or Resonator guitar has a Spider Cone apparatus, uh, go ahead and check out this pickup. It's the most natural sounding pickup I've ever heard, and I pair it with the Jerry Douglas Aura pedal. It's 
it's the best plugged in tone I've ever heard. Now, if you have a biscuit cone, which is a little bit different, a resonator cone apparatus, Fishman also makes a specific pickup for that, that actually takes uh, the biscuit and the pickup is embedded in the biscuit. Uh, both of those are great options. If you're looking for a more natural, less quacky, less weird sounding resonator pickup. And lastly, this is a very hot topic right now. Uh, this, this question comes from, Tony, well, I should say this comment. It's really not a question, but there is a question embedded in it. Tony Southwell says this. Hey, Tony and Noah. I've taken a few days to reflect after my earlier post, and I now write to ask something. It's obvious there has been a seismic change in the program content, and the show has less of a community spirit with the loss of all the segments that made the show so popular and which brought me and others here in the first place. I therefore ask why the major changes? What prompted them and what direction the show will now be taking? Some here have embraced the changes and like the new format, but there are many who have not. Tell us what's going on and then maybe we might understand this better. That's all I ask. Well, Tony, I just wanna say thanks for asking this question in such a very kind fashion. Um, I think when anything changes that we love, it's kind of like, oh, what's happening? Well, I'm here to say that actually there's really not been any changes. Um, the first concern you have is the community aspect of the show, and I'm gonna get to that in a second. But let me just kind of describe our thought press our thought process and our experimentation that has gone into some of the show format changes. First of all, we want people to be able to watch the show in its entirety. Therefore, we wanna make it a little bit more digestible. And what this means is that the more people that actually watch the entire show, the YouTube robots and stats calculate that and then actually push the show in front of more guitar geeks. So in a way, by shortening the show and making it a little bit more snappy, we're able to reach more guitar geeks because more people are actually watching the show start to finish. So that's the first reason you've seen some changes in terms of the show's duration. Secondly, we wanted to up the production value and add some really cool graphics and make the Acoustic Tuesday show something official. We want it to be an experience for all of you viewers and uh, hopefully we are headed in the right direction in that regard. And lastly, the community. Okay, the community is extremely important to us. In fact, your feedback actually helps us shape this show. So we certainly appreciate the concern like, hey, where'd the small winds go? Where'd the guitar snows go? What happened to the comments? Well, we're still gonna be infusing the show with that. We just have to start our experiments somewhere. So in essence, we trimmed it way down and now we're saying, oh, hey, people actually really do dig the small winds. People really do dig the guitar snows. So we're gonna be filtering those back in. They might not necessarily make the weekly appearance, appearance that they have done in the past. However, right now I'm currently building uh, a guitar snow, ah, can I say it, it's a collage? Basically, I'm storing up guitar snows and uh, I think you'll be pretty impressed on episode 100. I'll just leave it at that. But bottom line, I just wanna thank all of you viewers for your feedback because as I said before, you all help shape the show. You help make the show what it is. I mean, holy smokes, we're almost on episode 100 and I can't even believe it. And it's all because of you guys. You watch the show, you guys comment, you participate in the show, and we certainly appreciate that. So we appreciate your feedback, as I mentioned before, and also appreciate you helping shape the direction of the show. So I hope that answered your question. Um, and I hope uh, you continue to share and of course watch the Acoustic Tuesday show. Now, moving on down the line, uh, and, and I should mention, I already mentioned this, uh, if you do have comments or small ones, please always leave them. I do go through those and read those as much as I can. In fact, I'll be featuring more comments uh, during the show as I've just done right now. So moving on, I had a chance, uh, the distinct honor and privilege to participate, well, I shouldn't say participate, to try out the Taylor Grand Pacific models, the two new models that they've just released, but new body shapes, like a slope shoulder dreadnought kind of feel, the 517 and the 717 Builders Edition, and I'm super excited, and I think you'll be kind of interested in the backstory, because this isn't my first encounter with these guitars. In fact, way back when, when they introduced V-Class Bracing, I actually got a little bit of a sneak peek and I'll share that with you here in this video. So without further ado, here's the Taylor Grand Pacific. I'm dying to review the new Taylor models, the new Grand Pacific Builders Edition 517 and 717. I have them here, but I'm about to leave to go camping and there's just no way I can do it. Or is there? You know you're a guitar geek when you're out collecting firewood and all you can think about is reviewing a guitar that was released this year. 
First, let's start with these cases. They're absolutely gorgeous. You've got a faux tooled leather exterior, which looks outstanding with gold latches, plus a red, almost like a crushed velvet interior. Very classy cases. So right off the bat, these things are off to a good start. I do want to dig into the 517 Builders Edition, but first, there are two things that I dislike about these new Grand Pacific models. I'll let you guess those and I'll get to them in a second. Let's dig into the 517 specs. We've got a torrified Sitka spruce top underneath a beautiful wild honey burst finish. We've got an ebony bridge, brand new shape for Taylor, ebony bridge pins, a micarta saddle. The back is tropical mahogany. The entire body is bound in a sapele wood binding, very comfortable, all done in a silent satin finish, which I particularly love. I think it's got a nice classy look. We've got an ebony fingerboard with ivoroid arrowhead inlays done all over it, an inch and three quarter black, Graphite nut, Taylor headstock, again, inlaid in ivory, absolutely gorgeous. The sound on this thing is unreal. It's just thick, it's kind of dripping with tone, and I'm very surprised at the body that it offers, and I think that is in part due to the V-Class bracing employed. It has laser-like projection, but the notes pack a huge punch. They're not thin, they're not wimpy, they just sound darn good. <laughs> This isn't the best setting, so let me take you to the studio. Whitney decided to take a break from collecting firewood, but can you blame her? Just want to show you the campsite real quick. Here it is, and here's all the firewood we collected. But honestly, all I can think about is playing guitar. Which is why I'm gonna show you the 717 Builders Edition. This has a Sitka spruce top, that is torrified. Ebony bridge, ebony bridge pins, my car to saddle, beautiful Indian rosewood back and sides. The whole body is bound in sapelli and all finished under silent satin finish. We've got an ebony fingerboard with again, those arrowhead inlays you saw on the 517, but this time they're done in mother of pearl on the 717, an inch and three quarter nut, Taylor headstock with mother of pearl inlay on it as well and this thing is an absolute hoss, but we all know that cell phone audio is crummy, so let's go to the studio, shall we? share with you the two things I dislike about the new Grand Pacific models. First, the use of the black graphite nut. I know it indicates if the guitar has V-class bracing or not. I just wish it was bone for tonal purposes. The guitar sounds damn good with a graphite nut. I think it would sound that much better with a bone nut. The second thing I dislike is where the strap button is located on the back of the guitar. I favor it on the heel so that when you actually put the strap on, the guitar hangs from right there underneath the heel. I know it kind of feels like it might limit access to the 12th fret and above, but that's just where I favor it, and I'm a pretty picky guy. There's actually a third thing that I dislike, and that's that I can't actually keep these here in the studio or at my house for that matter. I gotta send them back to Taylor. They just sent them out to demo. These guitars are a complete knockout. In fact, they go right up onto my top three Taylors ever played list, which is the all Sapelli baritone that I had and sold, bad decision. The K14 CE Builders Edition they released last year, and now these new Grand Pacific models. So with that, there's my confessional. So there you have it. That's the Taylor Grand Pacific 517 and 717 Builders Edition. What great guitars, really offering something sonically a little bit different and really kind of breaking the Taylor stigma of not being a bluegrass guitar. I mean, just ask Trey Hensley. He seems to handle his Taylor 517 quite all right. <laughs> Sorry, Trey's guitar is actually a 717. 
But all in all, kudos to Taylor. Great job making a killer guitar, offering a new sonic slice of pie to all us guitar geeks. I have to say, those guitars really fulfill a certain sonic niche. And I really appreciate the developments and the thought that have gone into those guitars. I mean, it's pretty scary. Just think of it this way. Here's a major manufacturer employing a completely different bracing pattern on a completely new body shape to their line. And I think that takes some, some cojones, if you will. So, you know, hats off to Taylor and Andy Powers for moving forward with this and really creating a guitar that doesn't really sound like the typical Taylor, I guess we can say. Now, those are my words, but rather than me try and communicate what they were thinking, why don't we just let Andy Powers go ahead and communicate? So here's Andy and his thoughts on the development of the Grand Pacific shape. This guitar is the Grand Pacific. <laughs> When I set about to build the V-Class guitar, I'd been listening to a lot of these old records from my childhood. So I'd listen to Doc Watson's guitar, or Randy Scruggs, or one of these guys, and go, man, that's really pretty. But it feels warm and inviting. As a builder, one of the unique things that the V-Class idea gives me is the ability to shape the overall sound of a guitar. This guitar, it's my interpretation, of a round shoulder dreadnought with a new musical personality and the high standard you would expect from a Taylor guitar. It's always good to get the scoop directly from the horse's mouth. Not that Andy Powers is a horse, but I think that's a term that, that is widely accepted. Anyways, again, hats off to Andy and the whole team at Taylor for really kind of forging a path and just going for it. Uh, I think the results are pretty amazing. So if you want to learn more about the Taylor Grand Pacific, the 517, the 717, please visit AcousticLife.tv forward slash AT99, where you can do a little bit of a deeper dive, see some more videos, and of course, really dig into the specifics of that model. Now, moving on, we've got I've got a great blues artist that I'm gonna share with you today. One that has relation to multiple artists I've already featured on Acoustic Tuesday. I've got the mailbag, which I gotta tell you, we're gonna have a great mailbag segment because it's gonna explain Noah's hat and uh, there's some other very interesting things uh, down here beside me. But first, I wanted to introduce you to a guitar geek. A guitar geek who bought a guitar in the 60s and then it just kind of sat. Until very recently, about 30 years later, the inspiration struck and she got captivated by the instrument again and finally was able to come around and bring the fun back to guitar and make the guitar really work for her. Really forge a relationship with a guitar and now it's a huge part of her life. So without further ado, here is Joe R. Well, I started back in the 60s when I was a teenager and the folk movement was the in thing at the time. Some of the artists who inspired me in the very beginning were Basically, Peter, Paul, and Mary got it all started, and then it went on to Bob Dylan, Tom Paxton, Gordon Lightfoot, Joan Baez, of course. How could I leave her out? <laughs> the vision that I had at the time, and I think the vision that I still have, is just to be able to play anything I want to on the guitar, to be able to just pick it up and with a little noodling around, be able to play almost any kind of song, any kind of music. And so I bought a guitar, but there was just no hope of, <laughs> of really learning to play it. Uh, I bought books and video, or not videos, we didn't have videos then. Um, LP recordings that were supposed to teach me, none of it took. Before Tony's Acoustic Challenge, I was barely competent. I could play a few chords. I'm pretty good at rhythm, but I've gotten so much more confident in my playing. This is a song by Kate Wolf, and uh, she's a, she was a musician in Northern California back in the 70s. The title of the song is, an, um, I can't think of the title of the song. The title of is, to, just let me play it. My heart is here to stay. the name of the song, although I've gone away. <laughs> the 
when Tony first talked about doing Fretboard Wizard, it sounded like something that I, sounded like it was just what I needed to know, what I wanted to know. And um, that really was a whole separate and huge part of my learning experience. I mean, I had no idea how to find a key, how to uh, write a scale. And there was all kinds of things that I had knew nothing about. And then after taking the class, I find it, I use it all the time. It comes up in all kinds of unexpected situations. And there's, it's still making connections that I uh, had no idea were out there. So it, it's been huge for me, and still is. My name is Joe Rigg, and this is my Acoustic Life Story. I appreciate Joe sharing her story with us. And Noah, you got to spend some time with Joe. And I got to say, just as a, as a sure statement, I want to be just like Joe when I grow up. Well, I could say a lot. I agree with your statement, yes. Uh, getting up there and hanging out with, you know, Joe and her husband, Don, who are both music geeks. Uh, he's getting in the guitar. Uh, he's done bagpipes. He, they do the ukulele. I mean, so much stuff. It's, they're antique dealers. I mean, in, in, in an old part of the capital of Montana. So it, like, couldn't get any better. Almost like your, your, gra your grandma and your grandpa of guitar geekdom. Yeah, that's, that's a great <laughs> that's a great term. I had a chance to catch up with them just briefly at the Acoustic Life Festival uh, here in Bozeman, and I just I walked away from the conversation feeling like almost empowered and excited just by the sheer fact that I know them. They have this level of enthusiasm that is contagious and just so genuine, and I just I, I love it. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. It's so cool to have to have that moment where. You make that connection like, hey, this is something they wanted to get into a while ago, and it just gets put off, and life happens, and things happen, and then all of a sudden, that spark happens, and they just, they go full in. Mm -hmm. And it's so cool to see the reward, and just the excitement, and the, and the, the joy and happiness and fulfillment that results from it. Uh, it's so cool to see. So if, if Joe's story resonated with you, I gotta say, I know you'd be a perfect fit for Tony's Acoustic Challenge. To learn more about Tony's Acoustic Challenge and how it can take your playing to the next level and help you realize your unique guitar dream scene, please visit guitarchallenge.com or go ahead and click the link down below in the description. Now, I have alluded to the mailbag and Noah, I have to say, it's, it's time. It's time to dig into the mailbag. Do you want to share your spoils first? Uh, or do you want to wait? No, let's wait. Okay, yeah, okay. I've got you, a lot of spoils you here. Tee, you tee it up because... Okay. I mean, the connection and all. Well, I have the letter here, so... Right. Pretty okay. excited. There you go. Uh, this first uh, mailbag arrival comes from Tim K, uh, also known as Canadian Tim. Uh, he's a Tony's Acoustic Challenge member and an Acoustic Life Festival goer. He sent us uh, Smile Tiger Coffee Roasters Coffee. And the roast name of this coffee okay. is in is uh, uh, <laughs> it's Nightmare Hippie Girl. Wow. Night Nightmare Hippie Girl. And I am so excited to try this. It says, a whimsical, tragical beauty, self-conscious, and a little bit moody. That's hilarious. <laughs> I heard you say that earlier. Yeah. And I, and I didn't know what you were talking about. Yeah. I thought you were looking up, like, some new tattoo ideas no. somewhere. And <laughs> <laughs> so, so as my folks have always instructed, I have to read the card. He says, Dear Tony and the TAC family, thanks so much for a great Acoustic Life Festival. I hope it won't be the last I can attend. Thanks for all you do to help us learn more about guitar. Cheers, eh? Canadian Tim. So thanks so much, Tim. Tim delighted us in a wonderful performance of a, an original song that he wrote at the open mic at Acoustic Life Festival, which was outstanding. I really, really dug it. Um, this next arrival comes from Filed Guitars. Mm. And they sent this wonderful kind of CD slash book compilation that you can actually get on their website uh, featuring all these different filed guitar players. And it's got music, a little description of each player, some wonderful photos. And this is directly from Roger Bucknall, which was kind of, I get a little bit excited when I read stuff like this. He said, hey, Tony, I've seen your YouTube stuff about Will McNichol and filed guitars. Thought you might like to see slash hear this. If you need anything else, I have photos and more details I can email you. Email you. Just let me know. Hope you enjoy it. Regards, Roger. Uh, so thank 
thanks, Roger, for taking the time out to send that. I'm super excited to dig in, uh, not only to the book, but maybe read the book while I listen to the tunes. Very, very cool stuff. Does it uh, have a, a download code? It does not have a download code. <laughs> Sorry, Noah. It's Usually good. when I get records, I give Noah the download code. He gets great joy out of that. Uh, the, next, the next thing comes from Erin M. She sent a little sampler pack from the Heritage Distilling Co. Various bourbons for us to try. We've got a high altitude brown sugar bourbon and uh, just your standard brown sugar bourbon. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to get detailed on uh, what the tastes are here uh, after we're done filming. She says, uh, Tony, Levi, Noah, Angie, and Allie, you are just the best. Cheers to Tack and Alf's boom in success and your continued guitar geek journeys. I'm proud to be a huge fan of yours and I'm ready I'm ready and excited for next year. Like I told Angie, that wasn't a festival, that was a revival. <laughs> From the bottom of my guitar geek heart, Aaron M. and Abby. Uh, so very cool, thank you Aaron uh, and family. It was great to meet you guys in person and uh, share in the guitar geekiness. Next up, oh this is a great arrival. Actually we, we may have dug into this already uh, because we were hungry. <laughs> uh, this comes from Hawaii. Oh. Okay, it's a thank you card from, from Ken. And he says, Aloha, Tony, Noah, Ali, Levi, and the whole TAC family. I'm over the moon delighted with the Taylor GS Mini. Ken won a, a Taylor GS Mini in our monthly guitar giveaway. In Tony's Acoustic Challenge, when you complete the full months, of pra full months worth of practice exercises, you get entered into a drawing to win a Taylor GS Mini. Ken was the winner. He said, he said, I'm over the moon delighted with the Taylor GS Mini. My heartfelt thanks for your generosity and for inspiring thousands to shine and share their creative light into the world. Here's a care package of some Hawaiian treats as a small token of my appreciation, including some unique rum to expand your taste horizons. Best wishes, Ken. So Ken sent us some chocolate covered macadamia nuts. And I'm excited about these because my dad loves these and we have them. And, mm. and he doesn't. More on that in a second. There's a little bit of a rivalry going on between Noah and my dad. Uh, also, some assorted macadamia nut uh, flavors. Now, I don't think Ken knew this, but we are a huge fan of macadamia nuts here at the office. We have True. bags upon bags of them, and we've never had the flavored ones, so we have that. And then some Kohana Hawaiian agricole, agricole rum mm. distilled from native Hawaiian sugar cane. And Noah had already requested that we tap into this immediately, but I'm just gonna put the brakes on that in a second. This next, uh, we'll call it a care package, comes from my parents. <clears throat> Tony and crew. Tony, here are some treats for you and the crew. Enclosed is a hat for Noah, so he will stop wearing those flat brim hats. Just tell him the W stands for winner. Also, there's a pop rock figure, which looked like him till he shaved his mustache off. Maybe you could use some whiteout over the mustache and it will still look like him. Take care and say hello to the crew. Enjoy, dad and mom pee. So the snacks, now one of the snacks didn't even make it to the show. They were, they were fudge covered Nutter Butters. And Noah decided it would be a great idea to open them, which I thought was just cardinal sin A number one, because I proceeded to dominate the whole rest of the package of Nutter Butters. But yeah, how many did you have? I had uh, eight in total. I had one. Yeah, there were 12 in the package. Yeah. So that's cool. Uh, they also sent some, um, <laughs> what the hell are these? These are Goldfish Grams S'mores, because um, I, I wish they would have sent those little Tupperwares that you can pour them in so we could like have our snacks at lunchtime. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> and then this this is funny. This is why I said cojones earlier because I felt like it matched the uh, the hot nuts that were sent uh, to us. They're Cajun spicy peanuts. And Noah, as you can see, has the hat and the uh, Freddie Mercury pop rock figure, which uh, is yep. awesome. So thanks thanks to everyone who, who sent stuff in for the mailbag. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, we feel the love and we send the Guitar Geek love straight back. And I think Noah sends a little sarcasm back to Athelstain, Wisconsin, where my parents dwell. Well, if I may just briefly, and you know, as you were talking, I did show the wares, mm -hmm, so the, the mm -hmm, Freddie Mercury. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that got me the most was the letter starts out, Tony and Crew. <laughs> I guess my new name is Crew. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I'm Crew. <laughs> Sir Crew Jacob Heckman, <laughs> Jr. the first. Uh, let's move on to the Artist of the Week, shall we? This, this next artist uh, is one that I've been aware of for a long time, and I thought, I thought for sure we featured him, and lo and behold, we hadn't. And I was, I was 
communicating with a previous Acoustic Tuesday artist, and he said, man, you gotta check out this individual. And I said, I'm pretty sure we featured him. And I checked my little spreadsheet where I try and keep track of everything. We hadn't featured him. So I want to introduce to you Roy Bookbinder. Roy Bookbinder is an incredible finger picker, a great ragtime player, great bluesman, great original songwriter, and just a, just a character in and of himself. So uh, just to give you a little taste of what, what Roy sounds like, here is his tune Rag Mama performed at Fur Peace Ranch. Better get you two One for your buddy One for you I got a wife I got a sweetheart too Hope my wife don't want me When my sweetheart do Rag mama You better rag mama Ooh, rag mama I said, come on baby Let's do that rag While I'm going up to Alright, a little bit more on Roy So you know some geeky details Bookbinder was born in Queens, New York Upon graduation from high school He joined the Navy And undertook a a tour of duty in Europe. He bought his first guitar at a military base in Italy. After completing his enlistment, he returned to New York, where he met and became friends with his guitar hero, Dave Van Ronk. Bookbinder soon sought out Reverend Gary Davis, who also lived in New York, and became his student and later his chauffeur and tour companion. Much of Bookbinder's original material is based on his time on the road with Davis. So, I gotta tell you, this... Roy is just steeped in guitar geek tradition. Um, I have to say he has his own new era guitar model. Uh, so if you remember back a couple episodes, I featured new era guitars built by Tony Klassen and Roy has his own model and plays it and it's just gorgeous. And Roy's just, a, he's a masterful player. He's one of those players where he kind of can talk and tell a story all the while playing these incredibly complicated things. And you're sitting there as an audience member, a listener, a guitar geek, you're wondering, how the hell are you doing that? It's just, it's its like it just flows, the music just flows through him. So uh, to give you more proof of the music flowing through him, here's his tune, I'm Going Home Someday, uh, performed at McCabe's Guitar Shop. <laughs> thumpy, just raw tone that he gets. It's like, it's like the tones in his fingers. I think he could be playing any guitar and he would just get, he would just bring out that barky, thumpy, beautiful ragtime tone. Now, to give you uh, a little bit of a, a sampling of his albums, I've selected four to share with you. First is Bookaroo. Now, this was my first Roy Bookbinder album and I was so pumped to get it. I found it on Reverb LP and I thought, this is gonna be great, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this on. And upon throwing on the album and looking at the credits, the liner notes, uh, lo and behold, Jerry Douglas makes an, uh, uh, an appearance on the album, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is my Dobro hero on a new Guitar Heroes album. It's like it's like the stars aligned. Uh, next, we've got Going Back to Tampa, and then Traveling Man, which I believe is only available on vinyl right now, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and then uh, most recently released The Good Book. Now, if you dig Roy's playing, that finger-picking ragtime blues, kind of that raw nod to kind of the Delta blues and older blues, um, you want to check out a couple more artists that have all been featured on Acoustic Tuesday. Back on episode 94, we featured Catfish Keith and then Jody Carroll on episode number 51. Now, Jody's the one that actually reminded me about Roy because Jody was here performing at the Acoustic Life Festival and we got into a, a talk backstage and he was like, Man, Roy's a good friend of mine, and you know, Roy helped me discover all these different styles and things like that. And I was like, oh, Roy. And I thought we featured him already. And then upon catching up with Jody, I was like, holy smokes, we didn't feature him. Anyway, that's the story behind that. And then last but certainly not least, I want to make sure you check out Toby Walker, who was featured back on episode 63. Now, to learn more about Roy Bookbinder and see those performances in full, please visit acousticlife.tv forward slash AT99. We're getting links to buy those albums, check out the full performances, and just learn more about Roy. Now we're almost wrapped up here, but we have an important item of business and that is your Guitar Geek trivia. Here's a quick review of the question. What year marked the beginning of Chicago's famous Old Town School of Folk Music? Was it A, 1943, B, 1957, C, 1964, or D, 1968? 
Well, if you answered B, 1957, you're 100% correct. On the evening of Friday, November 29th, 1957, several hundred people streamed into the old immigrant bank building at 333 West North Avenue in Chicago's Old Town neighborhood, neighborhood, and so began the Old Town School of Folk Music. Quote, media folk, mid-1950s Chicago literati, and a colorful cross-section of the emerging Midwest folk scene. Then groupies, hootenanny veterans, gate of horn hangers-on, the assorted Shy town and 43rd Ward characters, everybody from Studs Terkel to Patty Baller were there. Remember Ted Johnson, who was there himself. Now the Old Town School has two locations, one at 909 West Armitage and the other at 4544 North Lincoln Avenue. And I have to say this, I just made the connection as I was reading this. I worked with Simon Flory at the Old Town School of Folk Music, so it's all coming full circle. And I have to say this, if you happen to be passing through Chicago, if you live in the neighborhood, have never explored the Old Town School of Folk Music, you absolutely must. It's a magical place. Uh, you don't have to go there to take a full session of classes, which takes about eight weeks, but you can go there for workshops, you can go there for concerts, you can go there for the music store, which is awesome. Make sure to tell uh, Tim Joyce I said hi. He's the manager at the store there. and. Um, Gosh, it's just a cool place. So if you're ever through Chicago and wondering what to do, uh, if you're on that north side, uh, you can go ahead and check out the Old Town School of Folk Music. I think I think you'll be pretty impressed with the guitar geekiness that happens there. So that's it. No, we've we've wrapped up the show. We've we've taken we've laid out the tortilla. We've put in the appropriate fixins. We've rolled up the tortilla that is Acoustic Tuesday and and just packaged it in a nice foil, uh, tin foil sheet so that we could you know, take it on a bike ride later and eat it with salsa. <laughs> yeah, I know that was my best one. Uh, let's take a sneak peek into next week to see what's gonna happen on Acoustic Tuesday. Oh my gosh. Next week, Acoustic Tuesday celebrates its 100th episode. Because of you, because of all the viewers that watch this show, you've helped us get to 100 episodes, and there's gonna be some special treats involved. Uh, let's see, uh, there's gonna be bourbon, there's gonna be heroic stories. And I don't scotch. know what, I don't even know what that means. And yeah. scotch. Oh, you, we're gonna do scotch too? Yeah, maybe some Hawaiian rum. Oh, oh, okay, we'll do a full sampling. Okay. Quite possibly there's gonna be cake involved, and of course, your weekly dose of guitar geeky goodness. So do not miss episode 100. It will be a momentous occasion. There will be some off the cuff things, probably fueled by bourbon and or Hawaiian rum. Anyways, or that's scotch. all gonna happen next week on Acoustic Tuesday. So make sure to tune in. Remember you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Catch it here on YouTube. And of course, for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, visit AcousticLife.tv where you can do a deep dive on anything I've ever featured on any episode of Acoustic Tuesday. Thank you so much for sharing your time with Noah and myself today. We certainly appreciate it. We appreciate your guitar geekiness. And uh, remember, Guitar Geeks Unite. Cheers and we'll see you next Tuesday on Acoustic Tuesday. Thank you.